Welcome to wearing shorts in this wonderful springtime weather and welcome back to Talking Planning for this very special episode 50 video where we go for a wander across the Brisbane River and I answer some of your questions. This is episode 50. As with many other of my ferry videos, we're starting today at West End. It's a great location to start because you often get two ferries in opposite directions meeting. As you can see here, there's a first generation ferry which is heading downstream up towards North Shore Hamilton and the ferry which I'll catch when it comes back around from UQ is Neville Bonner, Brisbane's latest ferry and it's a fourth generation city cap with the double deck. This site is particularly special because both ferries are in their original livery, which you don't always see that often. So you might already rightly be thinking, haven't you already caught a fourth generation city cat on this channel, Mr. Talking Planning? The answer is yes, I certainly have. I caught Yugra a few months back and it was a really nice ride, but a few things have changed since then. I've got a very nice Swish new camera which records in 4K and has much better pixel resolution. And this new ferry was launched only a couple of weeks ago and it's called Neville Bonner. So I thought I really go and ought to go and catch it and find out what it's like and see if there's any little incremental changes compared to Yugara. So come and join me for the ride. And I might even answer some of your questions whilst you're on this journey as well. So presumably, the first thing you might want to know is why on earth did I actually start this talking planning journey? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I had a little bit of a think about it and I was in the middle of April, so it was the worst of the pandemic and I was sitting there thinking, let's, let's be real. I graduated from uni in December. Things aren't looking up from job prospects. What can I do to keep my skills sharp and do a bit more research and keep busy and realistically keep those skills that I gained in my degree relevant and most people would say go and enroll in another uni course but quite frankly I was thinking about hex debts and stuff like that and I wasn't quite enthused so I thought to so the next best thing that I could think of at least why not start a YouTube channel and it's been an interesting journey you know I have found that I've had the chance to do more transport stuff as well travel around a little bit and it's been really fun 
And I guess that probably brings me on to the next sort of thing you might want to know. Wait till the announcement's over. Yes. So that brings me on to probably the next key point, and that is, why have I gone so much from planning to transport? Well, a couple of things. It's a bit of an interest one, you know. I find it easier to make content on stuff that I'm interested in. I love travel. I like traveling on public transport. I think it's a very important thing for Queenslanders and Australians to understand the importance of good public transport for this city and how it's going to develop in the future. So it made it easier for me to sort of do a segue into that as my general vlog topics. It also happened to be that we were allowed to travel again a bit more. You know, domestic travel restrictions are still in place, but intrastate, that is within Queensland, you can still get around. So it meant I now had a bit more freedom to travel around Queensland. And I thought public transport would be a good segue into that. Those are the last few things from me. So I'm gonna hand over and start answering your questions back in the comfort and quietness of my own home. Right. So I thought it was a good time now to go and look at your questions and give a little bit of an answer. So I've got a great number of questions that you've submitted and I'm really looking forward to answering a few of them. Actually, that was a little bit of a lie. To be honest, I was actually hoping for a few more questions and stuff from you to answer. So I have a few, but I do have a couple of good ones. So I'm looking forward to sharing those with you now. The first one is from Railtown Productions, which is actually one of my friend's channels. And the first question is, what is your favorite domestic destination? Pretty simple answer. It's gotta be Sydney for me. If you're a rail fan, easy. Double-decker trains always seem to win favors. I absolutely love them. I think they're fantastic. And it's a really cool experience getting to go on a double-decker train. But if you're not a transport nerd, Sydney just has so much more to offer. One of the things I really love about Sydney is the fact there's always something to do and there's always something open. You can go to some fantastic restaurants. There's some absolutely beautiful parks and nature reserves. And if you don't feel like hanging around Sydney CBD, there's always somewhere great to go on the weekend. Whether it's up to the Blue Mountains, Wollongong, Gosford, Newcastle, there's always somewhere you can go for a weekend trip, which I think is really enjoyable. So I hope that answers your question. And if the Queensland Premier is watching, I'd love it if you could start looking at some more options to safely open those borders because I miss Sydney and quite frankly, very keen to get back. So let's move on to the second question, which is from Australian Urbanist, which is actually a friend of mine's channel. And that was simple. Why don't we build more hydrofoils? Quite frankly, I was intrigued to find out about that. I didn't have any clue, so I did a little bit of reading. There's quite a few reasons. The first problem is hydrofoils are quite costly to build. If you build them in the more traditional way, they can cost up to three times as much as a catamaran ferry. And with our modern catamaran ferries, there's often not a whole heap of difference in terms of speed. The other big one's increased environmental risks. Those foils have to be sharp in order to create good, clean water flow. Because of that, a high speed ferry with clean water flow and a very sharp blade means you wouldn't want to be any wildlife in the way. You know, there's been increased cases of damages to turtles, fish, sharks, and other and whales and other marine life that generally hangs around in the water. Interestingly, though, there are still a lot of hydrofoils in Hong Kong, which are very polluted waterways. And they haven't had too many issues with pollution actually catching in the foils and slowing vessels down or causing danger. So how much of that argument is particularly valid is still up for a little bit of debate, I reckon. Another problem, high maintenance costs. Another key point is a lot of rivers and waterways have speed limits and the hydrofoils are just simply too fast. There's just not a lot of point trying to chase that extra speed if you can't use it. And I think finally, one more point, there's safety concerns. There's always that risk of the foils actually just attaching on an impact and you end up having this very fast boat flying through the air and the foils just sink like the sort of physics you see in a movie. So the next one was a key suggestion, and that is whether I could add a few more facts and stuff into my videos, particularly from doing these Bus Week reviews. Now, the Bus Week review series has probably been one of the most popular sets of videos I've done, and I'm very glad that you've enjoyed it. A big thank you for all of your support with that. It's been a fun journey making those, and I have a load of footage which I think will also suit that Bus Review format. So I am thinking of doing another Bus Week, but 
I just have to get all the time and energy together to get that all done. I really like the idea of actually adding a few statistics and stuff in. The only thing I just need to make sure is that I can balance it. I don't want this channel to become super, super specific and nerdy. That does sound ironic being a transport channel because we're already at that point. But I just want to make sure I don't go so far down the individual facts path that I actually lose interest from, you know, general transport people. But there were a few really good suggestions in there. Simple ones, things like engine power and torque, which are pretty easy to find for buses. And they give you a good sense of relativity. It's something you can pair quite easily between other banks and models of vehicle. Engine size, again, fairly easy to compare for buses. I guess the next thing I want to do is work out whether I should try and compare that between different types of vehicles. Put in, say, a baseline, something that the average person can relate to. Most of us have a car, and I think maybe it'd be interesting to compare the stats on those vehicles to the sort of car that we might know well. So I'll have a bit of a think about that in future videos as well. The only challenge that I have is for other modes of transport that I review, so trains and ferries and trams, a lot of these same statistics aren't as easily available. So I don't know what I want to do in that scenario, but I'll have a bit of a think about it. Overall though, Sam, one, good mate of mine, and two, I really appreciate the suggestion. I think it would add an extra layer of depth and improvement to these videos, which I'm looking forward to, and I think is something really worth doing. So we've got two more suggestions. I'll go into the next one, which is video production suggestions. Now, another viewer, ACD. I don't actually know, old mate, but I think it's important to note that I am aiming to improve these videos over time. And you might have just quickly noticed if you glance to the left, hang on, I'll bring it up. I have a new microphone because I think it's important to get sound right. This is probably going to really distort the sound, but there we go. I think it's really important to look at sound quality. You rightly did point out that picture and sound are both really important. And I think anyone in film production has ever, ever told me that sound is the hardest to get right. So I am looking at ways to improve that. I've got a new mic for voiceovers. And I think I'm going to use that more on the talkback videos. The next challenge, though, is on location sound. I don't have as much flexibility with that. On location sound can be quite difficult. I do have a little portable USB-C mic, and I think I just need to make more of an effort to use that when I'm doing on location recording. I should point out there are quite a few suggestions in this. Looking at the camera, and I'm trying to make a more conscious effort to get my attention on the audience better. And hopefully, this video is better than a lot of the previous ones, and I aim to do this going forward. I guess another thing I can look at is having a separate voice recorder for a lot of those voiceovers, but when you're in the moment, it's very difficult to try and line everything up perfectly. So unfortunately, one of the things of having on-location footage is you're not always able to get the same quality, but it's often, for me, I think, more important to get the footage there than not have anything at all. One other thing is being out in public, having a more discreet setup is a challenge. I'm not intending to carry around a DSLR or anything. Most of my footage is actually filmed on my phone, which is a Galaxy S20 Ultra, which gives you great picture quality. Sound is always a challenge with any mobile recording device. But the benefit of using a smartphone is it's simple and discreet. People don't go, well, what's this clown doing? Because you're carrying a massive DSLR around on a train and start asking questions. And I f find that one of the awkward things about any sort of filming and that people start asking lots of questions. Something like a smartphone is a lot more discreet, which I find really handy. The other things were just some of the video production. I've been playing around a bit more with the software, so I'm going to try and spend more time learning transitions and all of that to really improve the quality of this footage. The other thing to point out, though, is this is a fairly small channel, as you've probably guessed now. I do not really have the budget in there to hire people to do recording and editing and all of that. So it's going to be a one-man show, and that's all my responsibility. So I want to learn more and more as I go along. But if you're expecting a perfect TV-level production, well, unfortunately, that's just not going to happen with someone who's trying to get back into the workforce and uni at this point in time in the middle of a pandemic. So I've got to keep that realistic as well. And I've got one final suggestion that I wanted to look at, and that is Piggy's World has suggested go and take the 895 bus from Kabulchin to Kilcoy. Well, I'm actually really keen to do that. It's 
one bus journey I've always wanted to do and definitely suggested that a Saturday is the way to go. I've looked at the timetable. I 100% agree. I am really keen to do it. I'm just working out how I want to do it and whether I want to make it a bit more of an interactive special, maybe have someone along traveling with me as a guest. I'm very keen to do it. I just have to think of timing and all of that. So just one thing to keep in mind is I don't just have time up the wazoo. I have actually got a fair few things that I'm trying to work on at the moment. As you can probably guess, now's a bit of a crazy time and I am looking to get into the workforce and possibly go back to uni. I've actually got an application in for a PhD and a few other research programs at the moment. So I have actually got a lot on my plate. So I'm just trying to work through what's going to happen for the next few years. And I'm really keen to see where that takes me. I think the thing to keep in mind with requests is I I really love doing these sorts of things and I'd love to do as many of these requests. I just don't know when I'm going to be able to get around to it all and whether it's going to work at the moment and whether time or budget is going to be an issue. I really appreciate the suggestion because I would actually love to do the 895. It's a bus I've been curious about for a while, especially because it's within the vicinity of Southeast Queensland and it's a non-go-card service and there aren't that many of them left and I'm sure that they'll get absorbed into the new generation ticketing network as we go along. I think it's time to just leave a few closing remarks and I'd like to say thank you so much for all of your support over the first 50 episodes. Here's to many, many more. I really appreciate all of your support and thanks so much for joining me on Talking Planning. In between applying for jobs, getting every other thing in life done and creating these videos, I have also designed a cool 80s transport nerd poster, which you'll have seen behind me while I was talking in the middle of that q and I'm thinking of what I should do with it next, and I was hoping if you've got any suggestions, please comment them below. If you'd be keen to get yourself a copy of your own, let me know as well, and I'll see what I can do. I've been working out whether I should put them on bags, mugs, t-shirts, something like that. And I've got a few ideas, but I'm all ears, so if you want one of your own, please let me know.